<laughs> hey, what's up everybody? It's Joel, AKA The Daily Guru, and it's time for another edition of Something Old, Something New. <laughs> Today for Something Old, we're going back to one of my all-time favorite records. This is an essential jazz recording. It's Dexter Gordon and his 1962 album, Go. Now, a number of the most important figures in all jazz history have played the tenor saxophone. Dexter Gordon is no different, except there's no question he is the greatest bop-style saxophone player ever. Whether it's one of his lightning-fast progressions or one of his amazing statements of the bop-style, swing-style combination, there's simply no topping Dexter Gordon, and the Go record is where he's at his best. While the tempo shifts all over the place, the beauty of the actual piece are never lost and it's the combination of his sound and the way that his entire backing band comes together as a single unit that makes Go such an amazing record. One of the main ways that Go differentiates itself from a lot of the other standard jazz recordings is just the brightness of it. It's full, it's high energy, it's fun, it's spirited, and while it's an absolutely essential recording for any jazz enthusiast, it's also a really great introduction to people who know nothing about jazz, if nothing less than for the amazing level of energy and the kind of more accessible themes that Dexter Gordon and the band explore in every single song. One of the greatest elements about this record is really the chemistry between the band members. It's how the piano is able to fill in the small spaces that Dexter Gordon leaves open, and yet at the same time it plays almost a second vocal line to the saxophone. The other really great thing is there's this freedom throughout the entire album. It almost sounds as if it's a live recording, but it's not. This was done in a single studio session in 1964, and the results are absolutely phenomenal. There's simply no other studio session that has this kind of energy. And when you take this all together as a single unit, it's clear that all four members on the album were having an absolutely amazing time. You can feel the fun they were having in the studio. You can feel the energy going in between them. That's what makes Dexter Gordon's Go one of the most important records ever in jazz history. It's also one of the best recordings, so go out right now and get yourself a copy. <laughs> All right, guys, today for something new, we have a record that at least I've been waiting a very, very long time for. It's the brand new record from Bjork, and it's called Biophilia. Now, let me get this out of the way. I'm a huge fan of Bjork. I've loved everything she's ever done. She's one of my favorite artists on the planet, so needless to say, I had rather high expectations for the new album. And it's with that in mind that I can say this is her least cohesive album ever in terms of vocals, in terms of music, in terms of everything. Simply put, there is no flow anywhere on this record, and that's one of the things she's been able to master throughout her career, whether she was going completely acoustic, completely completely vocal or going hardcore electronica in her music, it has always seemed like a single unit with a very, very obvious flow. This is a very disjointed record. There are moments all over this album where Bjork's voice seems strained or just improperly used, and that is an absolute musical tragedy because she has one of the most unique and one of the most powerful voices in music today. The thing that's missing here is the intrigue, it's the excitement, it's those sonic atmospheres that she's always been able to create. Those were her trademarks, they are nowhere to be found on this record. Now, for me, I take it as nothing more than a novelty when I hear it was recorded on an iPad, or it was a combination of other users inputting ways that the song would be structured. That means nothing to me, because at the end of the day, you're a musician and the music needs to be good. Now, I've also used the interactive objects, the iPhone apps and all of the different games that they created around this. And while they do seem a little bit better because there's something else to distract me, at the end of the day, these songs just don't hold up. So on the buy it or borrow it, as much as I hate to say it because I love Bjork, it's not a buy it. And unless you're an absolute Bjork fanatic, it's not even a borrow it. Bjork's Biophilia is a bin it. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and click subscribe. Go ahead and click like. Go ahead and leave a comment. I enjoy reading them. You can go ahead and email me if you want at thedailyguru at gmail.com and you can check out my writing every single day where I write about the greatest songs ever written at thedailyguru.net. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter slash thedailyguru and we'll see you guys again Thursday. Hey!